This is Ireland's Classic Hits, home of the 80s and 90s, with Damien Faraday in the afternoon. Lots to do outside of the Crane Resort and Hotel here in Barbados. We've already spoken about the Rum Factory. We've been go-karting. We've been wined and dined in some of the uh, island's best uh, pubs and bars and restaurants. Absolutely gorgeous, sampling all the food. Another really important part of the island is the entertainment and the music business. And here in studio, and I'm delighted to see him right in front of me, is Big Yari. And you're very welcome to Ireland's Classic Hits. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I was just, uh, because we were doing our test a few moments ago. Yeah. And you're, you should be sitting over here, Biggie, <laughs> doing the radio show. But look, we quickly looked into you, uh, Biggie, and you were born in the UK. And Cardiff, you left, Wales, yeah. Yeah, and you left at the age of three. Three, yes. How did you end up in Barbados? Well, my mum was studying nursing while in Cardiff. And when she finished... But she met my mum, who was, my, she met my, my, my father, who was a Jamaican, and they had me. And when she left Cardiff, she brought me back to Barbados, her hometown. Wow. Yeah. And um, Cardiff is such a lovely place too. Have you ever gone back or do you go back? Have you I relations? Went back, I just went back once in 2003. And um, I have a lot of family, a lot of cousins up there. They've been begging me to come over. I was supposed to go last year, June, but because of COVID, I couldn't make it. So hopefully I'll be there next year. Okay. Yeah. And how do you cope with the Cardiff accent and the Welsh accent? I try my best to understand. Usually I'm, I'm okay with it, yeah. um, but I can't speak a word of it. <laughs> a, word of, a word of Welsh or, or anything like that. Okay. Well, drums and percussion are your thing. And yes. I remember I, like you, as a young lad, um, was into playing drums. Yeah. And I loved it. I had a little Ludwig set and I really regret selling that. At what age? I know you were three when you left Wales. How did this musical bug come, come upon you? When did you start playing drums? Well, that's the first... Actually, I'm a singer. I'm known as a singer. Right. right? But that's the first thing I started playing drums. I was about 10 years old when I, when I, start, when I sat behind my first drum set. Mm -hmm. And I just loved, loved playing drums. Always wanted to be a drummer. But then there was this band. I always used to sing a lot too. I, I grew up singing in the church, in the, the church choir. But then there was a good friend of mine who knew I could sing. And one day his lead vocalist didn't show up for, for rehearsal. So he came for me. And that's when I started singing. That's when the career started. It was a young reggae band called Exodus. And that's how it started, back in 1986. So... Where outside of here, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's not a huge island. There are about 290,000 people here. Yeah. Um, where do you play? Where, where do the, most of the gigs happen? So where is the place? For example, in Dublin, it could be Whelan's on Wexford mm. Street. That's right. where all the artists go. That's where everybody plays. And that's where you kind of earn your stripes. Yeah. Where would you earn your stripes here in Barbados? Where, I earned my where, stripes. When I started, we played at, the band played at, all the bands that I was in, um, we played at all the big clubs, the Warehouse, Harbour Lights, um, Which we're going to during the week and we can't yes. wait. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Harbour Lights, um, the shipping, coach house, all of the clubs back in the day. But um, now where I play, I, I mainly do a lot of hotels. Be well, because of COVID, we can't really. That's there's it. nothing happening outside. And um, since we reopened, I've been doing quite a few hotel gigs. Just a two-man two -man band and a few bars and restaurants. Um, right now I'm doing four nights a week, which is quite good. It is. Because we, I went from, from seven nights to nothing and now four nights I'm building. So it's, it's, it's quite good right now. And I'm at Colony Club tonight, Tuesday night. I'm at Tide's Restaurant on Friday. I'm at Seabreeze Hotel on Thursdays. And I do a gig in a ship, on a ship in the port called the Seabourn Odyssey on Sundays for sun, sunset, just before they sail. So, yeah. Biggie, how did you cope with COVID? And you mentioned there the gigs went from, you know, we all went from doing lots of something stuff. Something to nothing. Something. How did you cope? And I know you could say, well, look, I've, I live beside the beautiful Caribbean Sea. I can see the Atlantic Ocean. I can go for wonderful walks, breathe in that beautiful fresh air and enjoy the sunshine. Was music for you really important to get you through? COVID from, from being so busy and performing all the time to nothing. Yeah, it was it was it was torrid. It was you know, it was it was rough. But um and as you said, we I, I live in the Caribbean and I could see the ocean, but we, we were on lockdown, so I couldn't really go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But um gradually 
Um, thank God we've opened somewhat now. We're still on curfew until nine o'clock in the night. And um, but at least we're able to go and gig, which is which is I'm extremely thankful for that. But COVID was rough, and it still is for some people. But um, for me, I'm I'm getting back to normalcy. Do you think people here on the island will want an artist like you will want to forget about uh, forget about COVID or use that as maybe an influence in in their music going forward? I, I personally, I just want to forget about this whole thing. Yeah, I think, I'm not I'm not yeah. one to remind myself about it. I think when it's over, we're all double vaccinated, we're all safe. Yeah. Let's move on. I don't think anybody necessarily going forward will want to hear a song about it. Definitely, I don't think so. I mean, it will bring back too many bad memories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, what's the future hold for you? Well, I am. Um, I'm gigging right now. I'm. I plan. Well, we haven't had an, our. We haven't had our crop over festival for two years last year and this year. So I'm hoping that we can get one next year. Yeah, um, but I'm hoping to get back on the road and do some touring because I used to travel a lot. You know, to to did quite a few shows all over the world, and and I'm hoping to get back to that. Yeah. Yeah. And. I sense that you're a bit like me. They're sick looking at you at home. Yeah. Would you ever get back on the road? Would you ever get back out gigging again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be done. And yeah. I'm dying to know your influences, Biggie. My influences are Bob Marley, all the reggae, all the reggae giants. Um, Bob Marley, Steel Pulse, Peter Tosh, Bunny Whalers, um, Maxi Priest, Dennis Brown. Wow. Um, Stevie Wonder, Sting, Elton John, everybody. Because I sing everything. I sing all genres. But what I'm known for mainly are soca and reggae. Okay. And but, where can we go to listen to that? Have you got a website? Are you on Facebook? Biggie? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Biggie Irie. B-I-G-G-I-E. I-R-I-E. Um, Instagram, The Real Biggie Irie. Um, on Twitter, Sir Bigness. Love it. Yeah. Um... And you can check me out, just type me in on YouTube, Google Biggie Airy, and you'll see my music right there. Well, Sir Bigness, Biggie Airy, thanks so much for joining us today You're in Ireland's welcome. Classic Hits and continued success. And thanks so much for showing us around your island and letting us into your life as well. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is Ireland's Classic Hits. Ireland's Classic Hits.